Hey, welcome back to AndersonCooper.com. This is a special web edition. Uh, we're here with Teresa Caputo. Look at this bitch, this unlovable wet dog in Teresa Caputo. So what I thought I'd do here today is to look up a video of Teresa Caputo, famous psychic, Long Island medium as she's known, and look up the many fallacies of her psychic reading, which is very indicative of what other psychics do in their practice. Even though this video is old, they haven't changed their bit because they don't need to. They really don't need to. So let's take a look at the video. So Teresa, you, you've been reading a lot of people and as we went away, you said there was somebody else. You were, you were reading something else. So. Somebody lost a spouse newly and someone also lost um, a sister. And someone is also wearing the mother or grandmother's religious articles, whether if it's um, like a, a miraculous medal, a cross, rosary beads, or they brought them with them. So right off the bat, this dumb idiot is fishing for information from the audience. Right now, she's trying her best to cast her net wide and far to see who in the audience is going to acquiesce to one of her massively generic demands here. In this case, that somebody in the audience happens to be someone that has a religious article or something to the fact of a relative passing away. It's always the same sort of start to these particular demonstrations. And you wonder if they actually had genuine psychic powers, wouldn't they be able to just to hone in on someone in part? and say, hey, your father, Jonathan, who's dead, is telling me that he's actually not your father because he engaged in a lifetime of swinging and cuckoldry. And because of that, well, it turns out that you aren't his baby, but you actually belong to Tyrone. And just taking a look at the audience, you already know that the majority of these people already believe in what she does, which is already half the battle done. You don't have to put any effort because those who believe, no explanation is necessary, but those who do not, none will suffice. It's that old quote. And here it works perfectly because the state of this audience looks like wine moms that talk about this sort of shit on a daily basis while cheating on their husbands. Who lost the spouse? I think I'm right. I'm right here. You, is your wife departed? Yes. Your wife is departed? Ago, yes. Okay. Because she just, she sat next to you and she said, just sit down, just sit down. Would that be her personality? Another thing that psychics like this dumb, wet dog like to do is that they like to attribute certain personality traits to their victims. By the way, their victims are people that can't speak because they're dead. They can't talk for themselves. So you have what is their relatives talking for them. And usually these are people that are not necessarily in the best headspace. They're there for a reason. They want to see if they can maybe communicate to their loved one one last time. And she doesn't let them talk. She just talks right over them and immediately bombards them with questions. You're about to see that she gets one point completely wrong in the next clip. But it's just hysterical to watch because they all do the exact same bit. To tell you just, you know, maybe don't, don't speak up yet quite so much. Is that her wedding ring? Uh, Who's, no, it's my mother's wedding. Oh, it's your mom. Oh, because I heard some uh, the wedding ring, too. and your, that's your mom's wedding ring. Yes, it is. And this is my my wife's wedding uh, ring here. Oh, you have the wedding ring. Harry Potter and the audacity of this bitch to completely try to gloss over her fail there, pointing out what she thinks is the wedding ring, and it turns out no, no, the wife is the one that has the wedding ring. Of course, it's gonna be you, doofus. This is another great example of what psychics try to do, which is known as garnering hits or trying to gather as many easy hits as possible. Hits being a positive, a yes. Uh, does that belong to your mom? Yes. In this case, it was completely wrong. And it's something that you see them do often. And when it comes to fails, they immediately go into a different explanation as to justifying why they made a mistake. And most of the time, they end up blaming the victim. But where is the chair? Why do I keep getting the thing with the chair? Do you still have her chair? No. Or did she have an issue with her legs prior to her passing? No, she had a, a, her gall. Another example of casting your net as wide as possible is to just arbitrarily throw something out there. Throw something that's generic enough and hope that they're able to fill in the blanks for you. In this case, she threw out a chair saying, what about the chair? Assuming that maybe the participants here are going to be looking and trying to remember something about a chair. And if it just so happens that they happen to have a memory with a chair, then that's classified as a hit. You could do the exact same thing with anyone. Just go, um, I'm getting something about gas station boner pills, something about a rhinoceros in the front cover. Does this make sense to you? I think it makes sense to me because I'm seeing, uh, I don't know, your mom is telling me something about getting pounded and getting pounded hard by someone and, and I see a rhino, so I'm imagining that it's something to do with gas station boner pills. Does this make sense to you? Does this make sense to you? No. Or did she have an issue with her legs prior to her passing? Uh, 
No, she had a, a, her gall. Blocked. Who had the issue with the legs? Paralyzed or something amputated? Or was there an issue with the legs where your husband was res bed restriction? Is that correct? No, 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 no. What was with his legs? Oh, she, well, she mm. shaked. That point, you know, she's shaking her head no. So that's fine. Lady Look, behind. you don't have to acknowledge it. I don't care. I don't care if you believe in what I do. That's not. But just accept that. This is one of my favorite clips of this entire interview. And the reason for that is because it covers a bunch of different techniques. One of them is deflection. In this case, it's not working out with this particular group. So she moves on to what she thinks or what she's perceiving as somebody else. Maybe she saw a reaction on some other member of the audience and she's going to hone in on them. Then when that doesn't work, she immediately goes in and attacks them and attacks their belief as to what she does and that she doesn't care. She doesn't care. She's just letting them know that this is something that has happened to them or is going to happen to them. And if they don't believe in it, well, that's their fault. I really think this comes to adrenaline control and that she's not able to control her emotions. And she's seen that she's having a bad situation with this particular group, this couple. So she moves on to somebody else and she decides to attack them again for no reason. If you're doing a, a psychic demonstration like this, you don't really want to be confrontational with your audience. You don't want your audience to be your enemy. You want them to work with you. Because that's the whole point of a psychic reading like this. You want them to fill in the blanks. And if they're against you and if they're challenging you, you're essentially swimming uphill with a massive boner. You, I'm, I'm sorry? Afraid. You're afraid? What about me? I'm talking to dead people. <laughs> uh, don't you think I should be afraid? Why are you afraid? Right. I love that. She's afraid. I'm on the other side. Talking to dead people. She's afraid. Ooh, you clever bitch. You think you got one off on the audience, but you didn't get one off on Piggy. I know exactly what she did there. Notice that she used humor. She used a joke to kind of get a reaction from the audience. These fat troglodytes, my goodness, God forbid they ever decide to, I don't know, go low carb. But notice how she used humor to completely get out of the situation that she was just in. She made a really bad joke, a, a poor attempt at comedy, and that was enough for her to get away from the situation that wasn't working out with the couple, with the old man and the lady. And now she's going to move on to someone else. That was a complete bomb, and she's repositioning her entire body, going to the middle of the audience, turning her back to that couple that she was just reading that was a complete fail, a total bomb. And this is going to be her attempt to, again, try to get some more hits. And you know that audience member that she was just with is going to give her the benefit of the doubt which is where these parasites thrive they live in benefit of the doubt avenue and hopefully that couple is going to forget about all the fails at the end of the reading you have to understand it's not up to me who are you the one with the europe trip yes. oh on. see he wasn't done so just know it's just his way of acknowledging thank you for spending my money he says <laughs> just know that he will be going with you i don't know if it's something you discussed about prior to his passing something that the two of you always wanted to do as a family so please know it is his way of acknowledging that he's happy that you're going nope not again bitch you thought you had one over on piggy not this time not ever really this one is a very specific instance where she points out somebody in the audience and she says well your europe trip is there something about a europe trip and that's very specific and this person stands up and immediately acknowledges herself as the person that she's talking about which is different because this is fairly specific so you might see an instance like this on tv and go well what about this one well, here, I'll remind you of the clip from earlier on where Anderson Cooper says, well, Teresa, you've been reading people. Of course, the implication being that she was reading people before the cameras were actually on. So, Teresa, you, you've been reading a lot of people. And as we went away, you said there was somebody else. You were, you were reading something else. So even with that, notice how she approaches this lady to begin with. She says, oh, he's not even done, implying that she had already talked to her. You have to understand it's not up to me. Who Are you the one with the Europe trip? Oh, more on. See, he wasn't done. And she had already given her some sort of reading. So this is all information that's already been present, but obviously not to the studio cameras. So she's coming in hot to this particular person, knowing the fact that she could come in and make this big show as if she just got this information. However, she really told her hand when she said, oh, he's not done. And this is where I have to give this clever cunt a little bit of adulation, just because she knows how to work herself so that when the cameras are on, 
that's when she's going to make it seem like she got this information in the spur of the moment. However, this was information she already previously had. Do you understand the leg issue? Because when spirit jumps up and down, it is my symbol for that they can move freely on the other side. They do not have any disability and or ailment on the other side. They leave it with the physical body. So this right here is a callback to try to cover her ass for the previous fail from the older couple. Remember when she mentioned something about the leg and they didn't react? This is her attempt to cover that and in a very stupid way by saying, no, it's my symbol for being able to move on in the afterlife without any ailments that you had in real life. That's just bullshit. So please know that he can move freely on the other side. Um, did he not? Did you always cook him certain foods, but he didn't like it? <laughs> I, well, I don't want to look. I got my own problems with my cooking. I don't need to get in the problem in the middle of yours. But because he just said, oh, and by the way, could you just tell him I'm not eating this anymore? And I went, what? Another generic blanket statement that really seems like it could be specific, but applies to a lot of people. These are known as Barnum statements. And in this case, she's dropping one specific about food. And how many times have you had a partner or a relative cook for you and you didn't enjoy it? And now you're going to remember this because you're thinking fondly of the person that's passed on. So, of course, you're going to agree and say, yeah, there was a point where this person had a problem with my food. That's happened to everyone. <laughs> So whatever it is, just his way of acknowledging that he, because no one would know about that, validating that he's at peace and still with you, but more importantly, supporting going on the, on the trip. This right here is another great example of what I like to call false attribution. In this case, she's using the small amount of hits that she's gotten and roping in a bunch of her misses, but she's hiding that underneath the false attribution of the hits. So for example, she was very, very positive about the trip in Europe. And she very specifically wants the audience to attribute the hit about the food and the husband not liking the food into him actually being there. It validates that situation. She even goes as far as saying that because nobody could possibly know that particular bit of information, that validates the fact that he wants her to be at peace and that he wants her to go on that trip. And of course, attributing whatever it is that she wants to at the tail end of that. Who had the issue with the brain? Aneurysm, brain tumor, Alzheimer, or dementia? Who's that? Who had the issue with the brain? And then she goes off and names about 17 different things that could happen to the brain. This is another great example of phishing. And in this case, she's hoping that people could fill in the blanks. And she's going to use that information against them. Whatever it is that the willing participant tells her, she's going to pretend like that was what it was the entire time. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the brain tumor. That's exactly what it was. No, it wasn't. No fucking wasn't. And died? No, I... My no. brother died. My brother died of a brain aneurysm, and I also had a brain aneurysm. No, who died with the brain? The issue with the brain. And who is the MR name? Mark, Mary, Marie. They don't have to be passed. They could be here in the physical world. Because I might be piggybacking. Somebody might have the same meaning. I'm, I need to shift to the person. What an absolute great out this bitch has set for herself. If she fails at any particular reading, she could just say, oh, it's somebody else that's piggybacking off of my attempts to read you. And there she goes off to say there's something with an M and an R, like a Mark or a Mary. Or she might as well say, oh, I'm getting a, something with a name that has an A in it. Does your name have an A in it? Do you have anybody that you know with a name that has an A in it? Was your brother complaining about not feeling well prior to the aneurysm? Yes. Because he says, J even if I went to the doctor before. Now, look, I don't need any emails from doctors saying that, oh, if you went to the doctor. But look, from what Spirit has explained to me, our destiny in life is set. I say I'll find out when I get there. I He's saying that even if he went to the doctor, unfortunately, would not have prevented his passing. Might have been other complications. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. This bitch really is the queen of yapping, huh? All that yap and blab just to have this person say, yeah, yeah, I guess. And she's using another technique, which is, does that make sense? And that is a very generic statement because that makes sense. Of course, what she said makes sense because they're generic statements designed to make sense for absolutely everybody. And here she's trying to get the participants or as many participants as possible to say yes as often as possible because yes implies a hit. Yes implies she was correct. So if she asks them something like, does that make sense? And they say yes. Well, guess what? Now you got another hit. I need to talk about the person that has the Alzheimer's or who had it. So and did you always sit with your mom? She says, please let my daughter know that I knew that she was always there. Did you tell your mom it was OK to let go? She wants to thank you for that. She wants to thank you for releasing her soul here in the physical world. Did you used to feel a presence in her room or like a coldness in the room? 
You got to love that reaction by this particular participant. Did you ever feel like a coldness in the room after she passed away? Uh, yeah, I guess. Can you imagine that the serial yapper goes on for another 5 minutes and 48 seconds doing the exact same shit that I've talked about here throughout the entire video? Honestly, at this point, I think I'd rather watch a compilation of abortions than keep on with this video. Because it's the same exact thing. She's going to go over doing the exact same bits to different people in the audience, different victims, as I like to call it. And it's unfortunate because these people have nothing wrong with what they want. They want to be able to talk to someone who has passed on. And they have somebody here who claims that they could help facilitate that transaction. Little do they know that she's only doing that for, I don't know, more fucking money for hairspray, more money for cheap, shitty dresses that make her look like an anchor for a local news station. Now, I'd hate to be a shill for my own Patreon, but on my Patreon, I teach what I think is a very good amount of card tricks, coin tricks, and more specifically, mentalism, which is what this technically is based on, just mentalism techniques. So ways that you could tell people uh, names of loved ones that they're thinking of, names of particular locations, numbers that they might have in mind, things like that, all using magic means, which means sleight of hand, just trickery, which is what they're doing, but with a lot less effort because what she's doing doesn't really require a lot of effort. So if you want to learn that, make sure to look at the link down below and you could join for a very nominal fee about the price of a single White Claw month and you get access to over 1,500 videos going over pretty much everything that you need to become a great magician or in this case, a tremendous psychic fraud. You know what's bad when somebody with the moral and journalistic integrity of Anderson Cooper is in the background just wondering what it is that made him get to this point in life. So I guess the moral of this entire video is don't give any credence to these thieves, these liars, these professional leeches. They continue to prey on the weak and prey on the ones that are grieving for their own personal and financial gain. And it's disgusting. So let's not give them any more attention, even though I made an entire video about this dumb idiot. But let's not give them any more merit in what it is they're doing. Make fun of them. Call them names. Do everything that you need to bully these people out of existence. I see you again when I see you